But yeah, I had to cut this. And I told them I wasn't even going to tell that. And I was going to figure out a way to put this in there from the situation. Thus far, we've learned a lot about Letitia Stouck the day she reported her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon Stouck, missing. January 27th, 2020. Now, more than three years later, we finally get to see the body camera footage of that night albeit really small in the corner of a screen. Thus far, the witnesses so far have been Albert Stelk, who is Gannon's dad. We've watched his direct examination, heart wrenching, and we will follow up on his cross-examination soon. I just had to bring this body cam footage to you and the things that Letitia says when she should be worried about her 11-year-old stepson. Instead, Letitia is bragging to one of the responding officers how she's like into fashion. So We've heard from Al Stauk, Gannon's dad. There's been a Florida bridge inspector. Some of these videos I'll probably put up in forthcoming days. A Florida scene lead investigator, a detective and a deputy, two different guys with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, not in Texas, but in Colorado. They finally turned on the witness camera. So the person sitting on the witness stand, we can see them. You know, like every day at school, we lay out clothes, we do whatever. Is his jacket gone? He had on a, we, he has silver jackets. Like he might, it depends on, I'm, I'm very like fashion. And we can see part of the screen behind them. So that's what we're about to see. It's Deputy Patrick Yonkin who takes the stand. This happened Wednesday, April 5th, 2023. His body cam footage is from January 27th, 2020. He wasn't the first responding officer to the 6627 Mandan drive home in Colorado Springs, Colorado, but he arrived about 10.09 PM. Obviously some kind of back Letitia reported Gannon missing around 6.30 or 7 p.m. I don't think we've heard that 911 call. And Al has also called, apparently he called cops that night too. When he arrives, Deputy Patrick, he catches Letitia in her lying mode. You hear her again spinning all these tales. Letitia talks about her maiden name, Hardin, H-A-R-D-I-N. And she seems pretty chipper and chill, you know, after reporting Gannon as a runaway. When the cops are trying to ask her about, well, well, what jacket was he wearing when he left you'll hear her say well i don't know is it the blue one or whatever because i'm like you know fashion she starts talking about gannon's younger sister a woman is asking well did he leave on his bike so leticia starts talking about gannon's younger sister perhaps riding a bike and running into him but she doesn't mean running into him in the physical sense the cop goes through the house you can see part of it as much as we could with his flashlight searching every little room nook and cranny it looks like he goes to the garage looking at her black Volkswagen Tiguan. You know, that SUV, I always wondered if she had Gannon in there, right in the seat, suitcase under the third row. But the officer will say he didn't smell anything strange. At that point, Letitia may have allegedly transported Gannon somewhere else temporarily before perhaps moving his remains to Florida. We still don't know the truth. You see various items of junk and stuff in the car and in the house, and she starts telling on herself as usual. When they go to the basement, she starts talking about a box cutter. Oh, did you see a box cutter down here? I hope it wasn't still down here. She starts lifting up the carpet. She tells the cop about where she cut the carpet out. Obviously before this body cam footage began, and I hope we get to see others, and I hope we get to see them in full. Obviously Letitia had talked to the cops about the candle incident, or what have you, cutting out the carpet. I still don't know if there was ever really a candle spill or was Letitia trying to cover up bodily fluids. I don't know what the heck happened. I don't know if Gannon ever really spilled candle wax on the carpet or not. And she like cuts out this square of the carpet, lifts it up and she lifts it back down. She's showing the cops. I'm like very fashion, she says when she talks about laying out the kids clothes every day. She talks about teaching fifth grade. She's a fifth grade teacher. And so she kind of gives Gannon and a diss, a left-handed compliment because she's like, some boys are really mature, but then she kind of switches and says like, Gannon, you know, he's very forgetful. And to think about what she allegedly did to Gannon earlier that day, you know, you see all the brutality of it, stuff of nightmares, you don't want to hear about that. But to think about that maybe in her mind's eye as she sits here and she's yakking with these cops so lightheartedly and kind of dissing Gannon. It's ugh. So Letitia casually mentions to the cops that some lady on Facebook had published a photo. Everyone, as soon as they heard about it, the Lorson Ranch neighborhood where they lived, people started 
started searching, Al would say Letitia was sitting on her butt sending out, you know, other people to search that night. And the neighbor, Roderick Drayton's wife, had even said Letitia was smiling and acting like she was at a barbecue with all these people around who had gathered in the days following Gannon's disappearance. Letitia said, my husband gave this lady permission to post like a photo of some child or person from their ring or doorbell footage. And of course, Letitia is immediately telling the cops, she said, yes, that was Gannon. So I know the photos which she's talking about, they went around, you know, really early in this case. It turns out, obviously, it wasn't Gannon, but Letitia, always trying to throw people off the scent, is saying yes. So she's telling the cop casually, oh yeah, that lady, you know, my husband gave her permission to post that photo on the Lorson Ranch Facebook page, as if she's blaming her husband once again for allowing a photo of their missing child to be published on Facebook. It wasn't Gannon, but it was a child or a person or something, maybe holding something and Letitia is claiming, yeah, it was Gannon. It was him with his little Nintendo Switch. It was him with the cover. Maybe it was red or blue. And so, of course, the cop is saying, well, who was it? Where's the photo? And Letitia's like, well, to tell you the truth, I have more than a hundred and something messages on Facebook. You'll see, you'll hear her voice. She's so casual about it all. She wasn't jumping on it like, heaven forbid, your child is missing your 11-year-old. Thank God out for neighbors who are pulling their footage, looking, trying to help. Someone pulls, you know, oh, here's someone. Is that him? And Letitia, of course, is like, yes, but you know, oh, casual. Oh yeah, some lady sent me that instead of immediately showing the cops, this is him. What time is it? Where was it? The cops have to try and dig the information out of her. If you've listened to all the phone calls thus far, I've published at least one of them. If it's not live yet, it will be published soon. Phone calls two through six. Letitia has the biggest imagination and just the worst means of lying. She's like the devil. She's the father of lies. All of these lies that she put her family through her husband through screaming she wants immunity she wants immunity she wants him to promise her she won't be arrested and lie after lie after lie after Al said he'd been crying his heart out for his boy for like three weeks at that point. Letitia said at that point, me and my husband had to calm our stress levels down. So it's around 10 at night. She was claiming Gannon might be here or there. Albert said they had a rule that the kids should always be home when the street lights come on. But if Gannon was supposedly so sick that day that he had to stay home from school, let Letitia's lies tell it, well, why would he go on a play date anyway? But she started mentioning all these random no-name friends. Oh, we know about a friend with um an older sibling and the cops are like, who? And she's like, doesn't have a name, of course. She blames her husband again. He has all that contact info. He takes care of all that. You know, he takes them on base for their doctor's appointments. He does this, he does that. She's claiming she works on the East Coast. We know at that point she was trying to get a job as a flight attendant. I don't know how that would have worked. People were wondering. With Albert away, you know, he admitted he was going for his career. He sounds so broken when he talks about, I will always forever regret. He will always regret not being there for Gannon. So at this point with Al traveling quite a bit, Letitia trying to become a flight attendant. I don't know how it could have worked. Well, maybe Maybe with Landon, their bio mom, having temporary or partial custody, maybe it would have worked, but Letitia starts talking about she works on the East Coast. That's what she's telling the cops that night. Pay attention to what we have now. At least we're getting more footage. I guess court's not in session today, Thursday. I think it'll be that way many Thursdays, which will give us a break and help me catch up and get a lot of these videos up so we can see the full trial. 2 Timothy 1.7, for the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Stay tuned. Watch more of Tisha's lies and craziness. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, where are you currently employed? The El Paso County Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been with El Paso County Sheriff's Office? Since 2006. And generally, can you explain for the jury what your role is at the Sheriff's Office? Currently, I'm a supervisor for the patrol division. Okay. And in... Um, January of 2020, what was your role then? I was a patrol deputy. Okay. And as a patrol deputy, can you explain what some of your responsibilities are? What kind of things that you handle on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes, responding to calls for service, um, investigating patrol-related crimes, uh, interdicting criminal activity, traffic enforcement. Okay. And on January 27th of 2020, uh, were you on duty that day? Yes. 
Did you receive a call for service related to this case? Yes. Approximately what time did you receive a call for service or what time that call for service came through? I responded at 10.09 p.m. Okay. Can you explain um, a triage process that may occur for calls of service? How does that work? Well, calls for service are based on basically a priority status as if somebody is in danger or something like that. So those calls take higher priority than calls where somebody's not in danger, what we would call a cold call. So runaways are typically given a non-emergent status. Okay. You mentioned runaways. So what was the specific nature of the call for service that you responded to on January 27th of 2020? The call I responded to was a runaway juvenile. Okay. And what location did you respond to for that call? 6627 Mandan Drive. Okay. And when you arrived at that location, did you respond with any other law enforcement officers? Yes. Who did you respond with? Uh, when I got on scene, Deputy Parker and Deputy Donahue were on scene okay. already. And when you responded to the location, uh, who did you initially make contact with? Deputy Parker. Okay. Uh, based on your contact with Deputy Parker, um, how did you approach the residents? Who did you contact? Uh, I asked Deputy Parker if the residence had been searched to see if the juvenile was hiding, and he indicated it had not. Okay. Um, when you uh, respond and you're on duty, um, is there any way that you have to document or record um, your activities? Yes, I was uh, quoted with a body-worn camera. Okay. And can you point out for the jury uh, where that body-worn camera is? Yes, it's, it's mounted right here on my chest. Um, can you explain for the jury how that body-worn camera, how it works? It's activated with a Bluetooth remote system where I press a button and it starts recording. So when I got on scene that day, I started recording pretty much when I got on scene. And then it's deactivated by the same button to turn it off, basically. Okay. And in terms of um, audio and visual, what does it record? It records both audio and visual. However, it's mounted securely on the chest, so it only sees forward. So if my head or something turns, it, it won't see that. My body actually has to turn for the camera to see something. Okay. Uh, and uh, as it relates to entering the residence, um, what was your primary responsibility uh, when you arrived on scene? So I, I was a, a secondary responder. So the two primary deputies were conducting an interview on scene. So after I determined that the residents had not been searched for the juvenile. I asked Deputy Parker, after I asked Deputy Parker, Deputy Parker got consent to search the residents, so I began to search the residents for the juvenile. Okay, and to be clear, the consent to search the residents was for what in particular? To find a hiding child, Okay. Basically. When you arrived at that location that day, was your body-worn camera working? Yes, it was. It was operational? Yes. Did you have an opportunity to review that body-worn camera? Yes. Your Honor, permission to approach with what has been marked as People's Exhibit 210. You may, go ahead. Do you recognize what I'm handing you, People's Exhibit 210? Yes, that's a disc with my initials containing my body-worn camera footage. Okay, and did you not have an opportunity to review the contents of that disc? I did. Okay. And is it a fair and accurate uh, depiction of your body-worn camera when you responded on scene that day? Yes. Uh, your Honor, at this time, we've moved for the admission of People's Exhibit 210. Defense? Exhibit 210 will be admitted. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yes. Go ahead. And your Honor, permission to publish as well? May. I took the covers that he was laying down my head and I just like threw it. Mm -hmm. 
I took the covers that he was laying down, like had, and I just like threw it on there because I got my uh, daughter out and the dogs out. She was working, and it was it was something. Yeah, right now. It was something that we were just like. You know, Did he take his bike? No. Okay, so okay, because somebody saw a little kid on a bike. They posted it, but I don't know if he brought it. Well, he did unless he took it sooner and brought it back because Lena ends up getting a bike. Okay. And rides the bike because hers had broke. When she ran into him, I say ran into him as in not not physically, right. but she sw somehow got his bike because hers wouldn't work. Okay. So he could have at so one they were point. Here. Okay. Yeah. They were supposed to go pick him up for right. dinner. Okay. Yeah, and he never black, they thought he was black, at his friend's house. He was like, yeah. he didn't start sleeping. So we they, they we had him on one, 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 one. And they were, he was never there. There's and a he never went picture of someone said he was on. Okay. And he was holding, he was mm -hmm. making the switch. Do you mind if my so partner looks around the house real quick? Yeah, yeah. Because kids, they hide. Thank you. They get hide for hours. Yeah, no, we've already checked the pant like the. Is there, is there any other kids here? Yeah, there's kids here. I see kids here. There's a my sister, two dogs. Okay. Yeah, no, he's definitely, he, he, he was out there for big run and blah, blah, blah. Boom. It's I'm not I don't know the exact time because I was correcting his uh carpet thing downstairs. Okay. He, so he, they, uh, he's free like my husband's like very more like more free than I am with the situation. I kind of always like who's actually going to a unit I never know how I was with her. But like he's like oh, that was the you know they can ride bodies everyone together kind of thing. So um yeah so he every, all the time they go and ride and meet friends. That's how we do it. I think my did I bring my thing in here? I think it might be in here. Can you get her? Sir, I think it might be in your car. So whenever you're what, what what might be in your car? Okay, he wants my ID. Oh, okay. It, was this the car you guys had with you today? You what? Was this the car you guys had with you today? What do you mean with me today? I mean, did you drive this car today? Yes. Okay. No, no, no. I didn't drive that car today. You did not drive this car. Today. Okay. All right. Has he ever hidden in anything like this before? No. This is. No.
Is there anybody down here? The other dog? Yeah, that just says like no one should know. I mean, no one is down there. Okay. <laughs> it's my maiden name. So it's R A R D I N. Did you put mine clear valid? Three, 
Five Federal Right 717 facility registered to Danny Fred 2805 Mother Media as the Great Decoration Night. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can I show you my box? So if I just didn't want to step on the color, the, the box thing, yeah. I think I still had down there. Okay, because you weren't in here, you weren't in here in the beginning, right? I thought I had, I didn't know if I had that box cutter and all that stuff in there, because I told him about he dropped the candle last night. Oh, okay. And I was, I thought, mm -hmm. I must have picked it up. I was just making sure I didn't want you to be like, oh, it was the box cutter. But yeah, I had to cut this. And I told them I wasn't even going to tell dad, and I was going to figure out a way to put this in there from the situation. But at least you got a carpet, man. Right, I just took it and like covered up with the carpet and stuff like that. But Is it, does he have any friends around here? Um, there is a let me look on this thing. He did have this one like boat thing. It's where you're supposed to be at down the road. But they checked that already. They went over there and talked to him, and they're like, "No, we haven't seen him at all." Okay. He did have this like a. Uh, and you talked to parents, right? You didn't talk to. Yeah, Connor's mom came over, who right. is a friend he goes hangs out with all the time. Um, so they come over. The people here, the, the friends, they were just the ones that were the door with the bike. Okay. They came over. A bunch of people came over. Yeah. So. Any any he friends? Did, he did have like a little book that had um, names on it, but I don't know. No. See it like anywhere specifically because like his wallet. He doesn't, he's not like a, I teach fifth grade and like, you know, you got your like really, really chore, mature boy, kind of boys, but then waiting, he forgets to like bring this or bring that or bring this or bring that, you know? Still okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, so, clo no clothes are missing or nothing? No, we actually lay out all the clothes all the time. Like for, you know, like every day at school, we lay out clothes, we do whatever. Is his jacket gone? He had on a, we, he has silver jackets. Like he might, it depends on, I'm, I'm very like fashion. So like it, it just depends on jackets. Like he might have this black one with this, or there's a blue one with this. So he had a jacket. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Silver jackets. Like when I mean, you see the kid has, you know, like tons and tons of clothes and he just, you know, he has all that stuff. So. And he took like none of this. Mm -hmm. These are his favorites. All of these things. Yeah. All right. He's going to grab some more questions. And, okay. Um, How long have you guys lived here? Five Maybe like a year and something now. Yeah. And you, you have talked to all of his friends' parents in the area? But I'm not the person that talks to the friends. I don't have numbers. I don't say yes. I don't say no. My husband tells me yes or no. So he has all the numbers. So there could be some friends that you don't know. Right. Because I, I just don't, I don't know the people like that. And a lot of the time that I was here, I had to a job on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So I had to fly back and forth for a lot. So I didn't really meet a lot of people, you know, like my husband did. And he's like, always want to be the one to talk to everybody about it. And so, well, how about your husband? Is he yeah. talk to these people? Yeah, he's been on the phone with a bunch of them mm -hmm. in Oklahoma, Fort Sewell right now. Is there, um, is there anybody he hasn't been able to get a hold of? No, he said he's talked to everyone that he knows of. Um, the only concern we had is that he was talking about the friend with the older sibling. Mm -hmm. We don't know who that one is. That's the one we don't know. Do you guys have a name for that? Because. Person? that we i don't we don't know who that, that person is we've never heard him say like specific name my husband said when he talked to him today that there was no like um specific name for but he didn't give him a name he just told him no so he took his his game console bill yeah they have a couple of different consoles and one of them's gone which switch light they have a 2ds a 3ds one of them is gone it was in a, like a the bluish flag. 
Wait, no, that one might be in red. I don't remember. I just know in the video you can see that, or the picture that the lady had, you can see like the, like he's got something right here and it's like um, far down. Which picture is this? So some lady online had noticed it, like, like messaged us and had noticed that that was uh, him or the description. And she was like, was that him? And I was like, yes. What was that picture taken? Um, no, I, I honestly have about 150 Facebook messages that I haven't answered people on because you guys showed Was it local? I mean, was it in the yes, Lorsen Ranch? Yes, in Lorsen Ranch. Someone put it on the Lorsen Ranch page. And so a lot of people just kept sending messages, information. First, someone said they saw him get in a white SUV. Then someone said they saw, they called it on the camera. They were all supposed to be sending this to me. But as I was talking to all these people on Facebook, because my husband gave the neighbor permission to post it, mm -hmm. um, you guys came and I kept having alerts so I weren't going to like, you know. Mm -hmm. Huh? Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know you probably gave some of this information to dispatcher already, but can you give us a description of him from top yeah, to bottom? So, um, Hair color, eye color, any art? Yeah, so know? brown, brown, um, very pale, like a uh, whitish color skin. I guess when he's at this house, they don't. And then, um, and the parents may not know. And then, yeah. well, they said that 410. There was a weird text that dad got about um, something 90, about bath salts. And hey, if you, uh, if I, if I can get some bath salts, do we have any bath salts? Yeah, I and my friend will let me play Sonic or something at their house. He said that he's dead. Yeah, I got it. And then uh, mom goes through everything, finds a, like a, like a, oh, let's see this, this part. Get her. Yes, I'm Yes. No, we're still getting the runaway report right now. Harley. Yeah. Did you get it? Who was it? Oh, okay. I appreciate it. Oh, okay. okay. I just didn't want any of the people. Blue jacket, blue yeah. jeans. That, that's what me and my husband absolutely think, and we think he, we're like, just, we think that, that, and we've calmed our stress level down after our four hour week. It was not like a thick, heavy winter jacket, a sweatshirt, windbreaker. No, like the ones I was showing you guys in there, kind of like a little windbreaker type. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Is there anything distinguishing? Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Three out of fifty. I'm mid, so I'll be on a lot. Like, they asked me about tattoos and earrings and, and all that. Like, I, so I'm going to end up okay. asking a whole lot of the same questions that dispatch asks. Oh, uh -huh, yeah. Right. Yeah, if you hear anything from the school, let us know, please. All right. Oh, okay. Just on Roy Okay. Yeah, we already talked to a bunch of people at school. Yeah, they yeah. said security. Because there was a game or something tonight, mm -hmm. and so that was, like, one of the things we were thinking if, um, I guess, you know, they went to, like, the basketball game or something. Uh -huh. He said there was, yeah, he said there was parts and rent going on, so. Oh, Smith. Yeah. What? Well, it was off duty. No. Oh, okay. She said, he said somebody in the neighborhood or something. Um, does he have a dentist he goes to? You, if you guys want to call my husband. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. We'll follow up because I have a little bit more information. Yeah, they, I don't do a lot of the, okay. he does all that. How long has he been uh, over there stationed? He's at? not. He's stationed here. He's just at Captain, okay. Captain Career Course. Okay. Yeah. So they go to a dentist. I think it's like Fountain Dentist, maybe. All right, Everything get... else is on base. We'll give him a call. Yeah. Um, what's his name? Al, A L, Stouch, S T A U C H. Phone number? 843 478 Six, seven, seven, four. Four. Oh, right. Yes. Are we back on three? Yeah. I'm on three. They call me. They call code. We'll give him a call and try okay. some more information. Yeah, I mean, as far as like the medical dental 
yeah. you know, like, he'll know, like, all that stuff because he takes them all base. All right, well, we'll give him a call in the car real quick and see if we can get any information. Okay. If we'll come back and um, or we'll give you a case number. Or okay. Run away and everything. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks. The dog's come down here and update it. I see him. Okay. Any choice in, in gathering any vote? It's like bad. <laughs> Deputy, in terms of demeanor of uh, the female that we see present in the video, uh, based on the nature of calls for service that you receive, how would you describe that demeanor? Uh, fairly normal. Okay. Have you responded on scene to other reports of runaways? Yes. Um, how would you describe the demeanor? Um, general, general. Overruled. How would you describe the demeanor based on your training experience in responding to calls for service related to runaways? Um, the comparison of the female's demeanor in this particular video. I would say similar to other calls that I responded to for runaways. Okay. In the sense that her, their demeanors are calm? Yes, she, she appeared calm. She was able to answer questions intelligently. Okay. Um, and how did the female present on scene with you identify herself? Uh, I believe she identified herself to Deputy Parker and Deputy Donahue. Okay. Um, do you see the female that was present on the video that we just watched and while you're present searching the house? Do you see her today in court? Yes. She is the same. Is she the same female that you see in the video that directed you throughout the house? Yes. Um, can you describe her by where she's sitting in the courtroom? She's sitting at the end of the defense table wearing a brown colored shirt. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, um, may the record reflect that Deputy Yunkin has identified the defendant? The record will so reflect. Go ahead. In terms of while you were present on scene, um, did the defendant identify um, by any other names or any other um, aliases, things like that? I don't recall her identifying herself as another name. While you were present on scene, you described her demeanor as calm. Um, at any point, did that demeanor change? Not that I observed. Um, and to be clear, the time that you arrived on scene was what time? Uh, 10 09 PM. Okay. And as an approximation, how many um, hours had passed between the call for service as it came in? I believe the original call for service came in around 7 PM. Okay. Now, um, as we watch your body worn camera, we hear buzzing. Uh, what is that buzzing on, on the video that we're hearing? So when the camera's activated, it vibrates to let me know that it's on um, for two reasons. One, in case there's an accidental activation, I know that it's operating. Uh, or two, to just let me know that it's it's working. So sometimes when you press the button, technology fails. So it's just letting you know that it's, it's operational. And throughout the body-worn camera that we watch, we hear the buzzing. And is that to indicate to you that it is still on? It is still recording? Yes. Great. Uh, now, as you went through the residents, um, did you observe any men that were not law enforcement officers present in the house? No, just law enforcement. And as you were searching through the house, um, based on the various doors you opened and areas that you looked in, would you have seen a strange man, an unfamiliar man in the house? I believe so, based on all the areas that I searched. Okay. And to be clear, based on the call for service that you received, um, you were looking for a child, is that correct? Yes, in, in cases where children are this young and they come in as runaways, sometimes they're hiding in the house because they get in trouble or something like that. So they, they hide, especially on that night because it was quite cold. So he may not be outside walking around somewhere. He might just be hiding in the house. So that's why we check that stuff. And when you were present, you were also in uh, the basement area. There appeared to be a storage room, which you paused in. Yes. Okay. Um, 
while we see on the video um, you looking and pausing in a storage room, um, did you move any of the boxes? I believe I moved like a like a pillow and like a chair and some of that around, but there there was a big pile of boxes in the middle and I didn't shuffle through a bunch of those. No. Okay. And while you were present on scene, did you personally observe any law enforcement officers uh, moving those boxes? I, I did not. Okay. Your Honor, permission to approach with what has been marked as People's Exhibit 100, I'm sorry, 310 through 315. May, and if you could find a reasonable breaking point in the next uh, 10 minutes or, or five minutes or so, please, I'm sorry. Yes, Your Honor. Do you generally recognize those? Yeah, they appear to be still shots from my body worn camera footage. And uh, for a particular area of the house? The storage room. Uh, and are they fair and accurate uh, depiction of uh, your body-worn camera? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, we would move for the admission of People's Exhibits 310 through 315. Mr. Cook? No objection. Exhibits 310 to 315 will be admitted. And Your Honor, permission to publish? You may. Uh, Deputy, behind you, uh, we have People's Exhibit 310. Um, uh, what are we seeing here in your still shot? Picture of the storage room, some boxes and containers. Okay. Um, in People's Exhibit 311, I guess that's a clearer shot of that. Yes. Okay. Uh, 312. Farther back. Okay, and to be clear, uh, the boxes that we were seeing on the right side of the um, exhibit, did you move those? I, I did not sort through those, no. Okay, um, 313. Would this just be to the left of uh, People's Exhibit 312? Kind of yeah. facing a different way? Yes. Uh, People's Exhibit 314. Uh, can you orient us here for People's Exhibit 314? Yeah, that is the, the pile of boxes kind of in the center of the room. Okay. And People's Exhibit 315? That appears to be a storage container by the door. Okay. And um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Deputy, in terms of... Um, while you're searching through uh, the residence, at any point, did the defendant direct you where to search? No. Uh, did she point out any particular areas that would be of interest to you? No. Okay. Um, we see that when you're in the storage area, you paused, uh, you appeared to look um, in, um, I don't know if you would describe it as a crawl space or how would you describe it in the storage room? There's kind of a, a void under the stairs. Okay. Did you see anything, anything there? No. In terms of while you were present on scene, based on your training experience, um, did the defendant appear to have a pervasive mental disease or defect based on your observations that day? No. Okay. And while you searched through various areas of the house, um, in the top floor and in the basement, at any point, did you see any shell casings? I did not find any shell casings. And if you had seen them, would you have identified them and collected them? I would definitely would have identified them and then we probably would have approached the investigation a little differently. Maybe. And throughout your um, search of the residents on scene, was there any obvious signs of a struggle? No. Did you see any blood? No. If you had seen blood, would you have taken additional steps? Yes. And we'll pass a witness. All right. I think we'll take our break. Um, I'm going to make this real easy on the okay. deputy. I don't have any questions. Okay. Do any of the jurors have any questions for Sergeant Youngkin? Looks like we might have one. So, uh, Ms. Gratiano, uh, just pass that forward and put it on the bar in front. And Ms. Gratiano will uh, recover or retrieve it. Oh, another one coming. Sergeant Youngkin, um, do you know who would have been the first person to describe the missing juvenile as a runaway? 
I believe it would have been Letitia Stout because she made the initial call to our dispatch center. <clears throat> when you were searching the home, particularly Gannon's bedroom, did you notice any unusual scents or smells when searching under the beds? I did not. I just looked under there to see if I, a child was hiding under there, but I did not detect any strange odors. Did you see any large suitcases? Yes, based on the body-worn camera footage, it appears that there are some suitcases in those shots. I think what they were asking for specifically was a large suitcase. Oh, during my initial response, when I was looking through there, I, I don't actually recall if I saw a suitcase, only watching the body-worn camera footage later do I see the suitcase. Okay, I will allow reasonable follow-up as to those questions only. Um, Ms. Gratiano, do you have any? Mr. Cook? Uh, following up with this unusual smells question that was asked about the Gannon's bedroom, um, did you notice any like bleach smell, cleaning fluid smell, anything? You know, sometimes you can go into a house and it smells crisp and clean. Any smell like that, or was it just a regular, regular smelling kitchen? It, it smelled fairly normal. I didn't smell the strong odor of any cleaning fluid. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Sergeant. You can step down. <clears throat> Watch your step there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will be taking um, our evening break and uh, actually it's a little bit extended because we won't see you until Friday. Um, I need uh, you to take everything out of your jury seats uh, so that uh, take that back to your jury, uh, to the jury room, please. Um, don't, again, don't discuss case among yourselves. Don't discuss case with anyone else. Don't do your own independent research about any aspect of this case. Avoid uh, any stories that you might see and any opinions that uh, someone might care to share with you about the uh, issue. So with that, if we can have everyone back where they need to be so that they can be in place by nine o'clock on Friday morning, we should be able to start right on time at that point. All right, thank you. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. you. May all be seated. Record should reflect the jury has left the courtroom.